Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. You know, I, I said I wasn't going to do a lot of videos talking about the Gamergate uh, stuff and the Sweet Baby Inc. stuff, but this is so ridiculous. That, it really is. That we, we have to cover it. Uh, this is a bunch of uh, developers at the GDC uh, screaming in angst and agony because of layoffs and Gamergate 2.0. Now, okay, the, the layoffs I can understand being upset about. I mean, I get it. It's kind of your own fault on some levels, but I get it. Um, <laughs> on some levels. And I could see, I could see, I can see doing this at like a bar or something like later with a group. I don't think going to the event and going out, if this was at the actual event location and going outside and making a big deal of it and taping it and everything else was probably smart given the fact that you're doing it over the the all the layoff, uh, layoffs that, that keep happening. Yeah. That wasn't smart, but then in your interview, you're flat out blaming Gamergate also. Yeah. So it's like, look, I mean, there's so much going on with this. It, it would, and we haven't been keeping up with it on this channel, but it, it's basically everything's kind of imploding right now. We've got, uh, you know, GDC, which is the Game Developers Conference going on, and uh, there were... There's a lot of drama going on there because of the Sweet Baby Ink stuff. But yeah, apparently they thought it would be a good idea to organize a shout-in or whatever the hell they call it. And it just makes you look like a fool. It makes it, you it look really, like a fool. It really was not smart, especially when you're doing it at the event or near the event. And you're, 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 you're conflating it with the event. Your bosses are not going to probably be very happy about it. No, I think they're going to look at it and be like, oh, hey, that's Joe. Okay, so now I know what Joe thinks. Okay, well, next time we do some layoffs, let's... Uh, Joe on the list. The shit can Joe. So let's let's talk about this. <laughs> shit can Joe. We'll, uh, Sorry. That should be a game. Shit can Joe. Shit can Joe. How would you make that a game? Like I don't know. Find find uh, colorful ways to fire Joe. Joe is is causing all kinds of problems for your studio. Joe is constantly on social media. Joe is constantly talking to editors of garbage tier video game websites. So you have to find a very um, uh, nebulous way to fire Joe so Joe can't sue you, but still mm, okay. get rid of Joe. You have to shit can Joe. Okay. Yeah, achievement unlocked. Joe is gone. <laughs> anyway, let's talk about this. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Guys, you get woohoo if you do. Woohoo. You have to scream it real loud, right? Okay, but if I, you're not going to want me to scream no, it. No, let's not do that. I can, but you're not going to like it. I won't. Do you want to? But it make you feel better. No. Okay, then don't. I, it's not, it'll hurt people's ears for real. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to scream. Don't worry. Oh, God. Not intentionally. I might scream later, but it's not going to be, you know, that won't be intentional. Yeah. So let's look at a couple of these articles here. We got one from, uh, what is this, from PC Gamer. This one is from uh, 80 Level. GD Scream. Oh, my God. Yeah, the <laughs> GD moment, Scream. Okay. Is a moment of catharsis, camaraderie, and uh, caterwauling. Look, oh I mean, God. if you're you're screaming because you're mad about the layoffs and stuff, okay, I get it. I, I, I totally get it. But not a smart idea. The game industry is falling apart around us, and we're all flocking to San Francisco oh, for a week to darn. pretend... To pretend like this is fine. Well, maybe if they were outside anyway, they could have just got bags and clean up the trash and the shit. And they could have just made the world a better place. San Francisco used to be a beautiful city. It did. And they pretend like it's fine. Yeah, we're going to San Francisco to pretend like San Francisco is fine. Okay. It's not the weirdest thing that's happened in it's San Francisco. It's going to shit, much like the gaming industry. You should feel at home. Let's take a minute where we all stop pretending and express just how it feels to be a game developer in 2024, states the event's description. Join us for a collective moment of catharsis, camaraderie, and caterwauling. Let's descend upon Yerba Buena, and when the clock strikes noon, have ourselves a nice big GD scream. The event was organized by former Epic Games producer Carol Shaw and Fortnite Festival designer Scott John Siegel, Speaking with PC Gamer, Siegel said that all the awards and ceremonies failing to mention the layoffs happening inside feels absurd. At the end of the day, it feels hard to be here and pretend like everything is fine. No, I'm telling you what's going on. Uh, the video game industry is getting sick of your shit is what's going well, on. Well, you only can make games that suck and people don't buy them or want refunds for so long. And you only can get away with shoving shit into games that people don't want for so long until, you know, the company has to take notice and has to get rid of people. I, if they can't afford to keep you, then. I I think, and I've, I've mentioned this in other videos, I think they're taking the opportunity now with the venture capital running out and sales being down. 
in and the AI. In AI. Let's be honest, I'm not going to lie and say AI isn't playing into it because you know it is. To to their course correcting. They they know they have a lot of people that they could get rid of that aren't really bringing anything. I, you know, or I they're, they're bringing too much. Or they're bringing too much drama. <laughs> I mean, they're bringing yeah. too much drama to the table. And they're like, you know what? We just want to develop and make and sell games. And you guys are actually getting in our way at this point because you're constantly antagonizing, uh, antagonizing people. And yeah, it's, it's yeah. So I think we're going to have a leaner, meaner uh, game industry after this. I think this is basically a reset button. I think it actually feels on some level like the early eighties in the video game crash, maybe not to that extent, but what happened was it didn't destroy video games. What happened was, you know, Atari got too bloated and that whole thing imploded, but computer games were fine. And then a couple of years later we had Nintendo and they had quality control on their games. You know? So it feels like we could be hitting the reset button again. Well, I just, I'm thinking about all the women they've been doing, how they've been portraying women in games lately and how absolute fugly they are. And I'm like, you know, I mean, we're talking like pushing limits. Oh, like yeah. The one um, in Horizon, is a Horizon Zero Dawn, and now like, she looks like Jerry O'Connell. I don't, I don't understand yeah, it. Yeah. It's like, yeah. why? It's like, why, why do you hate pretty women? Because they're not, they're not. And they want to see themselves in these video games. Well, but, some of them might be pretty women. I mean, they might also, you know. Well, okay. So, look. <laughs> I'm not going to generalize. But what I'm going to say is, here's the thing. With any piece of media, right? Because I'm I'm not Henry Cavill, right? But, like. What's Henry Cavill to do with it? Oh, you don't look like Henry Cavill. Right. Oh, but I'm I just, was like, why are you bringing him up? No, because okay. I always think about him. No. Um, so do I. But, well, there you go. We both are thinking the same thing at the same time sometimes. What are you there? thinking about? Tacos. I was going to say tacos, but Henry special. Cavill eating tacos, not your taco. I need to be very clear <laughs> about that. Talking. Anyway, um, no, what I'm saying is like <laughs> entertainment, escapist entertainment like this, whether it's um, superheroes or video games or anime or whatever, we don't want to see ourselves in those characters. We want to see kind of idealized versions and certain kinds of characters. And we're, we're trying to escape. I don't want an autobiography. I don't want you to take a $300 million game and turn it into your sad ass life story. You know what I'm saying? This is the same with like comic books too. Like there, there have always been slice of life comics where people complain about their shit that's going on in their life. Autobio comics. And some of them are okay. Some people just have really boring ass lives, but what they've done is they've taken superhero characters and decided that they were going to use them and basically scream kind of the, 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 I guess drawn version of screaming. It's like other people shouldn't have to pay for your therapy. Yeah, that's basically right? what it is with animation too. It's like, yeah, I mean, it's not like, so much now, but like back when like Shira came out and so like some of these, you know, different shows, they had it was just very big therapy sessions for the showrunner. It's like you're you're creating a product for your audience. You're not you're not creating a product a, to, for yourself to work through your issues. And, and, and as much and as all these, these people want to do that, as much as they're out there screaming. I guarantee you, if you had gamers, hammer, I was saying, if you have gamers, let's have a meetup. I wish I had known. So the gamers could have met up in the same area and they all could have screamed too. So why is it okay for these people to scream? But then as from heels versus Babyface, he's not allowed to scream about pronouns because he's so frustrated that he just wanted to play the game. You yeah, know, that's, know. that's it's bad. The double standard. Yeah. All right. Let's listen to this. Uh, let's listen to this scream. We, we have to. Sure. Because that's the video. That's the whole uh, video. Put it, put your, put your I'm doing it. I don't on. want to. I'm only one earring this one. Ah! 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 The hell? Ah! Ah! I, I think someone needs to check their pants. I think they might need diaper changes. Look, I mean, as far as the layoffs go, I get it. But there's a reason for them. God. Some of it's self-inflicted. Some of it is like AI and stuff like that and venture capital. But some of it is definitely self-inflicted as well. Yeah. So speaking to PC Gamer at the event, Siegel said he was prompted to organize the event by the frustration he's felt over widespread layoffs and the recent Gamergate controversy Which over is narrative Gamergate consult- 2 controversy and the Sweet Baby Inc. thing is the frustration of gamers. Yeah. How they've been frustrated. And maybe you guys wouldn't have your asses laid off if you weren't doing this shit. I mean, some of you still would, but you know what I'm saying? Oh, God. 
left. Uh, all I wanted to do, can we just get people together for just a moment of catharsis, a single minute, smack in the middle of this entire GDC? Can we just have some cathartic caterwauling together? Even if we can say nothing else, even if there's nothing else we feel like there's nothing else we can say at this moment, don't let GDC go by without acknowledging that collectively we feel like things are not okay and we want things to be different. They will be different. You probably won't be back next year because they're probably going to fire like well, half of you. Is this event still going on? If yeah, it is, I think so. All the gamers should go to the event and go out, stand outside the event and start screaming. Um, so they're talking about some of the stuff we've talked about. They said that venture capital, uh, they yes. said VC funding is poisonous because if you're an indie publisher and you get some sort of funding, you're basically an indentured indie Truth. developer. Yeah. No one believes in organic growth at the top, whereas everyone knows at the bottom, organic growth makes more money over time. Why are these people impatient? It's true, though, because they actually want results. Yep. And sometimes, though, and sometimes, while it's true that over time it can make more money, if it's something good and word of mouth spreads, that it makes it money. What you guys are putting out aren't those things, for the most part, if we're going to be completely honest here. Uh, freelance game writer and tool oh, said the current state of the game industry is terrible and, and impacts everyone, even developers who haven't been laid off. I was talking to someone yesterday who said that the people are afraid to join companies that they have not uh, had a layoff because now they're worried as soon as they come in, they're going to be the first to get kicked out to the uh, curb. That makes sense because you're a low man on totem pole yeah, or but, woman. Uh, I think. Look, I don't think this is, I don't think this is doom and gloom. I think it's doom and gloom for some people. I think this is, again, this is a course correction because AAA titles in particular have been bloated. Live service games have been bloated. And the video game industry has been infected with a lot of people that would rather scream than solve problems. Well, here's the thing too. Like, I think the company is starting to realize, like, it's not that hard to get it right. You give no. people a good game. You make women look like women. You have a fun, you know, you can even have, you can even have representation and crap, and crap in the game. That's not the problem. It's when you're just like deliberately changing things or shoehorning things for narrative. And you're telling, you have people out there saying, go to the marketing teams and tell them what kind of trouble they'll be in if they don't give us what we want. Yeah. That kind of shit does not fly. But if you make good games that are solid games, that are just fun games people want to play, they're going to play it. If they're done well, they'll buy it. It's, it's not that hard. We've it seen isn't hard. We've seen a lot of indie games blow up because they've avoided a lot of the traps the AAA titles have fallen into because of consultancy firms like Sweet Baby Inc. You know, mm -hmm. uh, just people putting out a fun game. And, and we've lost, I think, video games has lost sight of that kind of core... Uh, I don't know. I want to say like the, the core value system that like you're, you're, you're creating a fun product for your audience. Now everybody wants to, to bring all this baggage in the gaming. And we have a lot of people working in the video game industry that they don't do shit. They're not, they're not coding. They're not, you know, they're just kind of there like, Oh, I'm the, uh, PR micromanager for whatever Epic Games branch of live service of what it's like. Do you need to be here? Are you actually making a game? Because there are some damn good games. Some of the best games in history have been made with less than a dozen people mm -hmm. working on them, and everything is so bloated. And a good game will stand up. You know, it'll stand the test of time. And as far as games journalism is concerned, games journalism hasn't been journalism for a long time. Games journalism is a bastardized version of the fanzine scene. It, like there was no game journalism industry. The reason that the game journalism blew up was that uh, you know fan coverage of video games, which was a very niche thing when it started in the '80s, uh, very niche thing. It, it because video games blew up, then people had an appetite for news about video games. But then that became bastardized. It wasn't just news about video games or the new games coming out or talking to developers. It became um, a platform for people that wanted to get into the industry or control the industry. And this is why Kotaku is being told to basically shut the fuck up and do, mm -hmm. you know, game walkthroughs because that's what people actually want. They don't want your hot takes. No, they don't. You know, you didn't, you want to do that. You go start a podcast, you go start a YouTube channel. You can give your personal opinions over there. People just want news on games. They want, they want to know how to beat a game. And, and honestly, there are so many games out there. I feel the same way about this that I do with like movies or TV shows or whatever. Like nobody has had the opportunity to play every game ever made. Like you could stop making video games tomorrow and there's so much stuff out there that hasn't been played that's much better than what's being put out. Why not go back to playing a 10, 15, 20 year old game? A lot of people just, that's what they do. Yeah. Like I don't like the new stuff, so I'm just gonna play the stuff I liked. Yeah. You know, there's okay. a lot of things I can still do. Read old comics, watch old TV shows, and play 20-year-old video games. I mean, the hell, they're going to bring them back anyway. 
I mean, seriously, like half the games that come out now are just remastered versions of old games mm -hmm. because they pretty much plateaued, you know, yeah. like 10 or 15 years ago. And then they just keep going back to the same well again and again and again. So yeah, they're not really needed. We're going to wrap this up. Mm -hmm. Let's wrap this up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. We'll talk later. Bye.